What's up dudes, Chad here at Barry Big Plums Fishing and uh, I'm bringing you a video when I recently fished Diva Springs just before the COVID-19 lockdown. It was actually the hardest session I've had at Diva Springs for a couple of years. It's one of those kind of perfect storms of conditions. It's um, cold but it was starting to warm up so you had a few midges hatching off. It was really, really windy. Um, and it was quite busy on the day we was there. So everyone really, really struggled on this day, to be honest. Uh, I saw about six or seven fish caught through the whole day. And two of those fish were mine. I went there with my friend Spencer and um, he lost two fish as well and unfortunately blanked. But uh, this video is mainly just to bring you guys a little bit of content. I actually wasn't going to upload this, but who knows when we're going to get out there and do some fishing over the next few months. Um, I've heard some experts say... 12 weeks i've heard some experts say as long as september um hopefully that's not the case because i think i will go uh stir crazy get cabin fever if i can't fish for that long but the main thing is that people stay safe and we can beat this thing if we all stick to the rules and do it together but anyway guys a little bit of footage of me at diva springs my friend spencer i hope you enjoy it um because it's kind of a little bonus video all right dudes what's up dudes chad here at baby plums fishing and before we go on lockdown with the COVID-19 virus, I decided let's have a session at Diva Springs um, because honestly, I don't know how often we're going to be able to fish over the coming months with the virus outbreak. So uh, I'm here with my buddy around there, Spencer. You saw him in the last video. It's only about fifth or sixth time trout fishing. Let's see if we can get him a decent fish. You're going too far back and too far forward. Okay. Your rod's not loading. Huh? This was just one of yeah. those really, really weird days fishing, guys. I never normally struggle at Diva Springs. I always, always normally fill a ticket. But for some reason, the fish were just turning off the flies on this particular day. I tried everything when I turned up from Big Lures, Martin William leeches. And I was even down onto like size 16 and size 14 little flies um, later on in the day. And I could actually see the fish in the margins occasionally um, turning away from my fly quite often. But I did only see a few fish in the margins on this particular day. Most of the fish were right out in the middle of the lake. And it was quite clear as well. You know, you can normally see in the water at Diva. I could certainly see around the perimeter of my Costa sunglasses. And I really do think that it's just one of those days they was out deep and they just weren't looking to really feed. It just could be the air pressure. It could be the uh, fact that lots of fishermen were there the previous day. It was just one of those really, really tough days. We all have them at some point. Um, I had a stalking bug on, I had a, had a couple of fish just snap at it, but because it's ripply, I kept missing them. Right, after about five hours, multiple flies, I've actually got one on, on a bright white chomper. Out of nowhere, absolutely ripped the rod out of my hands. That was awesome. Oh, hello. Little jump. Big jump. That's cool. It's got me a rainbow if it's jumping like that. I don't care. It's been a very, very hard day so far. So I'm gonna follow this fish. Look at the mud. Sid Knight's flies here guys. Oh, he's a jumper. He's a jumper. There's a pony rolling over there, a little Shetland. Right, 
I am not bullying this fish because it's been a very, very hard day so far. Oh, he's going, he's going. Oh. Very nice. A massive deep fish, but deep fish on the same. So, he's gone for that, he's hooked him under the chin. So, he's definitely gone for the fly. That's why it's going to be such a good fight. There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Quite a little bit sorry for uh, my friend Spencer on this particular day. He lost two fish, and the cool thing about it was he actually stalked the second fish that he uh, lost and hooked it. And this was a particular fish which was cruising the margins on Willow Lake, and I could not hook this fish for love the money. It took my tiny stalking bugs three or four times, I couldn't hook it. But Spencer, who's only been fishing about half a dozen times, watched how I was stalking, picked up his rod and actually hooked this fish. He did lose after a couple of head shakes, but he's obviously, you know, quite keen to learn. And he's obviously picking up bits and pieces that I'm showing him as we go. So that's really, really cool. Um, last time I we went to Rockbourne, it was really, really easy. This time I went to Diva, it was really, really hard. You know, as anglers, I feel really sorry for these fisheries because no matter what they do, it's either too easy or too hard. That's just fishing. It's called fishing, not catching, guys. I had a really good day with my friend. He had a good day, even though he didn't actually manage to land a fish, even though he hooked a couple. And uh, probably by the time that the coronavirus is gone, we're probably going to be out of the best fishing. We may resurrect the mayfly season if we're lucky, or it may be the middle of summer. But if it comes up and it's just summer, I'm going to do a bit more fly fishing for carp this year as well. But... The main thing is, guys, you've got to stay safe, stay indoors, save lives. It's very, very important. We don't want this thing dragging out to the next winter, you know. The sooner we play ball, the sooner we can get out there on the bank. All right, dudes, stay safe. This is Chad at Baby Plums Fishing.